Good morning from Horse Guards on another dazzling summer day. And welcome to this brilliant celebration of the Queen's official birthday. A military parade unrivaled for its precision, complexity and elegance by any army in the world. The 24 officers who take this parade are now coming out onto the parade ground to take post. The men they're commanding have been here already in their ranks for the past 10 minutes or so, and the mass bands down in the bottom corner of the picture waiting there as the officers go to their various guards. And paraded today at the center of this whole ceremony, the color of the 2nd Battalion Coldstream Guards, which will be trooped past the ranks of soldiers here and then marched past Her Majesty the Queen when she arrives. She's not here yet, of course. This is the early stages of the parade. And we look across past the Guards Memorial there through St. James's Park and its brilliant trees all out down towards Buckingham Palace at the far end of the Mall. Route liners all the way down, crowds waiting to see the processions that come out from Buckingham Palace, the standard flying there, and the Queen Mother's procession. All the royal family have gathered here this morning. The Queen Mother in a barouche comes out to a royal salute. the Princess of Wales beside her in pink, and the two royal princes, Prince William and Prince Harry. Just with those outriders and a carriage behind her, the Queen Mother goes up the whole length of the Mall and turns into the approach road in 10 or 15 minutes' time, the time it takes to go up that distance, which looks so short, but in fact is nearly a mile long. And here on the parade ground, number three guard, you can see apparently breaking ranks, are moving to each side of the central carriageway of the parade ground, so they make room for the Queen Mother when she comes onto the horse guards itself. No, now on parade today, and it's a little bit confusing perhaps because you think of the guards as just being the five guards regiment, there are in fact eight guards and the key guards today because it's their color that's being paraded is the 1st Battalion Coldstream. I think I inadvertently said they were the 2nd Battalion which would have upset them but the 1st Battalion Coldstream and they form guard number one the escort for the color and guard number two and next to them number three and number four guards the Grenadiers from the 2nd Battalion Grenadiers a regiment founded by Charles II. The Coldstream were founded by Oliver Cromwell and then taken on by Charles II in 1660. And then after them, moving along the side of the parade ground, number five and six guards found by the 1st Battalion Irish Guards, founded in 1900 by Queen Victoria. And then there are two more, the Scots Guards afterwards. And now back at Buckingham Palace the start of the royal procession as the first and second divisions of the sovereign's escort of the household cavalry lead Her Majesty the Queen alone in an ivory mounted phaeton. And 
until three years ago, Her Majesty used to ride on this parade, mounted on a horseback, riding side saddle, but three years ago she stopped doing that, and now in this phaeton, which was specially restored for her birthday parade, she travels not wearing uniform, but in ordinary dress, but nevertheless she's the Colonel-in-Chief, the senior officer, if you like, of all these Guards regiments. And her eye is on every detail of this parade, exactly the positioning of the horses, the lines of the troops, the smartness of the turnout. She notices it all as she sits there, apparently just out for a drive, looking to the crowds on either side. And when the parade is over, if there were things that didn't work out exactly as they should, she wants to know why. So there's the procession going down the Mall, the first and second divisions at the front. And then the Queen's carriage and then further divisions of the Sovereign's escort behind. And meanwhile, back here on the parade ground, two more guards, which we didn't have time to mention before, on the north side of the parade ground, the last two guards, which are found by the second battalion Scots guards, founded by Charles I in 1642. You can recognize them. You notice there are three buttons, groups of threes their buttons are in, and uh, each guard's regiment can be told, identified, by the way their buttons are arranged, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to tell one from another, and of course in warfare they need to know exactly who is who. The Queen's mother's carriage party has now reached the top end of the Mall and turns into the approach road towards Horse Guards. Alfie Oates, the deputy head coachman at the Royal Mews, who's been there for 34 years, is driving her this morning. And as the Queen Mother's carriage turns on to horse guards, there'll be a royal salute. Guards have already come to the present. Queen Mother, the Princess of Wales, she waves up to the window where she's going to be watching the parade ground, disappear under the archway there of horse guards. They'll be on that balcony above watching later on. And so that's the Queen Mother's procession arrived, and the Queen, remember, on her way up the Mall at this moment, and all come to watch this ceremony which centers on the color today of the 1st Battalion Coldstream, a color which will be trooped, which is a practical and at the same time emotional importance to the guards regiments if you cross down to st james's park and the guards chapel and go inside you'll see these colors of the guards divisions hanging on the walls they've been laid up as memorials of regiments whose histories go back nearly three and a half centuries and some of these are regimental colors some of them are king's or queen's colors but they're all reminders of battles and campaigns that the guards regiments have fought
Tangier in 1680, of Waterloo, of Inkerman, of Dunkirk, of Tobruk. And the regiments who still troop their colours today for them, those names recall the stories of heroism and courage that have been shown by their own forebears in the regiment. The Coldstream have a rare collection of all 13 Victoria Crosses that have been won by members of the Coldstream Guards, which they keep in their museum. This medal, which was commanded by Queen Victoria in 1856 to be awarded for acts of supreme bravery in the face of the enemy, and has on it just that simple inscription for valour. And of all the holders of the Victoria Cross, perhaps in the Coldstream, the most flamboyant was John Campbell, a hunting man as well as a soldier. He was commissioned into the Coldstream Guards when he was 20. And when the First World War began, he was a lieutenant colonel. And during the Battle of the Somme in 1916, he won his VC by an act of great daring and dash. He used his own hunting horn to sound a rallying cry and lead the men of the 3rd Battalion against the most ferocious machine gun fire. And this is the regimental painting of that event. After the war, he became a brigadier general and then presented the famous hunting horn to the regiment. But that battle at the Somme is one of scores that the Coldstream have fought, and the honours embroidered on their colours reflect only a fraction of the campaigns in which they've seen action. 111 actions in all could be listed on their colours if there was space. One they remember especially was in 1945, just coming to the end of the Second World War, when a bridge over the River Ems near Lingen, this is another regimental painting of it, and the bridge had been primed for demolition when Captain Ian Liddell, single-handed, without cover, under heavy enemy fire, ran the whole length of the bridge, disconnected the charges of explosives, and managed to save it from being blown up. An act of heroism which allowed the guards to take it intact and cleared the way for the advance across the River Ems. He was awarded the VC for his daring and 18 days before the end of the war was killed by a sniper bullet when he was 24. And there's another man they remember in action on Hill 270 which is a steep slope near Salerno in Italy which brought the Coldstream their first Victoria Cross of the Second World War. It was in 1943, Company Sergeant Major Peter Wright. Again, single-handed, armed only with hand grenades and rifle and bayonet, managed to silence each of three mortar posts of the enemy that were holding up the advance. And later, when all the officers had become casualties, Peter Wright himself took over the command, successfully beat off a German counterattack, allowed his battalion to capture and maintain this major objective. And today, at 72, Peter Wright is the sole surviving holder of the Victoria Cross from the Coldstream Guards. So, Salerno, the Somme, Inkerman, just three of the 42 battle honours born on the colour of the Coldstream Guards, which this morning will be trooped before Her Majesty the Queen, the colour of a regiment tracing its origins back, as I said, to the mid-17th century. And now the massed mounted bands of the Household Cavalry are approaching the parade ground, led by those favourites of the parade, the two drum horses. recognize the tune, the soldiers of the Queen. And they've come onto the parade ground leading the Queen's procession, which is now coming to the bottom end or the top end of the mall, depending on which way you look at it, and will turn into the approach road, turning away to the left, so that the Queen herself will come onto the parade ground.
this then is the Queen's procession coming down the approach road the mounted cavalry are going to line up along St James's Park off the parade ground itself the Queen driven this morning by Stephen Matthews not by her head coachman in his full state postillion livery unfortunately Arthur Scholl is normally here is not well today with Twilight and Cardiff two handsome Windsor Greys and a carriage that was made in London in 1842 Her Majesty is wearing on her left shoulder a brooch given her in 1983 by the officers present and past of the Coldstream. So as a tribute to the 1st Battalion Coldstream, she wears that badge with just the two rows of pearls and no other decorations. The coachman salutes the colour as he goes past. You may be surprised there hasn't been a national anthem yet, but we wait for that until the Queen is right round the side of the parade ground. She's actually going behind her troops, behind the Scots Guards at this moment. A crowd of about 7,000 people here this morning to watch. And when she reaches the dais at the top right there, she gets out, and only when she's on there will there be the royal salute. As she passes, she used to salute to her mother in the balcony of horse guards. Now that she's not in uniform, she no longer salutes, but acknowledges her mother, and her mother smiles back. The Duchess of Kent there, and the Queen Mother in the window of the Duke of Wellington's old office. a smile up to her mother as the coach drew up we couldn't quite see it and the Queen now comes onto the dais for the start of this parade As 11 o'clock strikes, the King's Troop of the Royal Horse Artillery in Green Park across the Mall from here start firing a 41-gun salute. And now the first part of this parade, which is the inspection of all the troops here by the Queen in her carriage. And music will play as she sets off, preceded by the Brigade Major. And the band will play as she goes round. The Brigade Major, Major Scott Clark, a grenadier officer riding that Gray called Hush Money with four troopers. 
he accompanied her from Buckingham Palace onto the parade ground. He now leads her round. And she passes first the mass bands and will then turn down past the 1st Battalion Coldstream Number 1 Guard, the escort for the colour, the key part of this procession today, and then go right down the full length of the guards. So past the Guards Memorial and the Queen now coming to the corner where she'll turn and come up the line of the 1st Battalion Irish Guards and then to the 2nd Battalion Scots Guards. So there's the procession. In the front, the Brigade Major, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Langton riding Santana, then the Queen and then behind the Queen, the Royal Colonels of the Regiments, who we'll see in a moment. The Queen now, you can see, looking with a keen eye at the dressing and turnout of the Scots Guards. she turns round the top end of the parade ground and comes back behind the guards on her way to inspect the sovereign's escort and the mounted bands of the household cavalry. Behind her, the Prince of Wales, Colonel of the Welsh Guards, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Colonel of the Grenadier Guards in the centre, and the Duke of Kent, Colonel of the Scots Guards. And then behind them, Goldstick in waiting and the Master of the Horse, the Earl of Westmoreland, then the Equerries, and then the important figure in the centre there, the Major General commanding the Household Division, Major, and as from today, Major General Sir Christopher Airy, who was knighted yesterday, given the KCVO. And behind him, the Colonel of the Foot Guards, Colonel Sir Brian Bartlett, and Silverstick in waiting, Colonel Parker Bowles. And then the Chief of Staff, Colonel Carnegie Brown on Harrison, at the back, and the aide de camp, Captain de Halverdung, the Scots Guards. A picture that you could have seen in the Crimea, a picture you could have seen in the First World War. The officers escorting the Queen looking like the staff officers in a regiment. And a very impressive sight. And they're coming now behind the back of the first, second, third, fourth and fifth guards and are therefore between them and the mounted bands of the household cavalry. That the music you're hearing is coming not from the Household Cavalry at the moment, but from the mass bands in the middle of the parade ground. A salute to the standard of the Household Cavalry as they come past, and the Queen too will acknowledge the standard.
And now the inspection by the Queen is nearly over and she sets off again diagonally across horse guards back to the dais ready for the next stage of the birthday parade to begin the troop of the mass bands which is the second part of this morning's birthday parade Major General Sir Christopher Airy, who commands not just the Household Division, but is also the General Officer commanding London District in the plumed hat there. A former Grenadier, he's now in the Scots Guards. Mounted on a chestnut, Flaxton. He was appointed to this post in 1986. dais with the chair or throne for the Queen to sit on has been specially made for this year's parade from oak from Windsor Castle and in, this, in the same shape as the oval desk that the Duke of Wellington used in the office in the horse guards above. And now follows the troop of the mass bands under the command of five drum majors, no less, but with drum major ward of the Coldstream Guards in overall command and giving the instructions to these mass bands who come from the Coldstream, the Grenadiers, the Irish, the Scots and the Welsh. Though the Welsh Guards only have their band on parade. They're actually on duty in Belize at the moment and not here. The orders given on horseback by the field officer, Colonel Armistead, the commanding officer of the 1st Battalion, Coldstream. the Huguenots, the mass bands slow march towards the center of horse guards. by everybody on this parade ground in this heat this morning. As they get within four paces of the colour party, these mass bands counter march.
gas bands have now halted on the north side of the centre carriageway and on an order in a moment they break into a quick march. Noticed Lance Sergeant Dakin, a side drummer who broke away from the mass bands and marches to take up position at the right of the escort for the colour. It's his job when he gets there to give the drummer's call, which marks the start of the troop in the colour itself. he sounds his drummer's call, incidentally, the command of the escort for the colour is taken over by the subaltern of the escort, Lieutenant Buckman. And all eyes then concentrate on the escort for the colour, number one guard. Orderly is crossing the ground to take the pace stick off the regimental sergeant major behind number one guard because he, at this stage of the parade, has to unsheath his sword. The only time on a parade that the regimental sergeant major, Keith Robinson here, has his sword in hand. The 
command change arms, which happens regularly in the parade for this heavy rifle, the SA-80. Lieutenant Bucknell then, the subaltern, in charge of the escort for the colour now, ordering them to dress, and then they march out to receive the colour, which you remember is on the far side of the parade ground from them. Even though they're cold streamers, it's traditional that that march is played. The escort for the colour marches towards the horse guards building itself, wheels to the right, and then has to mark time for a moment until the mass bands in front of them there have cleared the way for them to go across and receive the colour. The regimental sergeant major now marches from behind the escort and on his way picks up the ensign of the escort, Second Lieutenant Andrew Cumming, who actually will carry the colour in the troop. And together they march across to the colour party.
so the escort now not for the color but to the color having saluted the color the men on the outside you notice turning out at the port to protect the guard while they did that are now almost ready to start the troop of the color first through the ranks of the guards bands now start to play escort to the color and as they do execute the famous spin wheel a complicated maneuver in which each turns at a different time in a different direction and somehow by magic they all finish up facing a different way but in exactly the same relative positions as they were before and however carefully you watch it you can never work out exactly how it's done So the whole parade is now at the present as the troop of the color starts. A tradition which is as old as soldiering itself with the practical purpose of making sure that every man in the regiment can recognize the colors of his regiment. Knows where to assemble, knows where to rally, knows where to report. But carrying with it, of course, the tremendous associations of regimental pride so that the color itself becomes a symbol of the strength and caliber of the regiment. The color of the 1st Battalion, Goldstream Guards. Crimson and gold with its battle on its art or at least those of its battle honours that could be fitted on, because there are many, many more than are here. And this colour was presented by the Queen to the battalion here on Horse Guards three years ago. It hasn't actually been trooped before. It has, however, been under attack in Northern Ireland, where a bomb exploded just by the regimental headquarters, and it was blown off the walls, but not damaged. an old military tradition. The tradition of celebrating the sovereign's birthday by trooping it, which is what is happening here today, is also very old. It goes back to the mid-18th century. It's first mentioned in regimental orders in 1749. And apart from two world wars, this parade has happened continuously ever since the reign of George IV.
carries, of course, a further symbol, which is of the guards' readiness to defend their sovereign and, by implication, their country and the Constitution. So that just as the soldiers there on the guards' memorial who are commemorated remind us of the reality that lies behind the dazzling procession we're seeing today, just as the rifles that they carry, ugly-looking SA-80s instead of ceremonial rifles, remind us that all these men are active service soldiers. Many of them have served in Northern Ireland or in the Falklands. So this parading of the Queen's colour, or of the colour of the regiment at the trooping, reminds us that these men are at the service of the Sovereign as Colonel-in-Chief and of the nation as a whole. So the first guard is almost back home and the subaltern has the most difficult job of halting them exactly in position so that the front man is where he should be next to the flag there on the corner and the rear man is clear of number two guard and he has to give this order while marking time himself which is no easy thing. now back under the command of the field officer. And now with the escort to the colour safely back in place, the parade ground prepares with a series of movements, the first one the officers taking post, taking up their positions for the next stage of the parade, which is the march past of the foot guards, first in slow and then in quick time past Her Majesty the Queen. Now numbers one to five guards are in position, ready to start their slow march. And the Scots guards, the first battalion Irish guards, move into position two so that they're ready to follow round, forming threes. 
tune is Coburg, and leading now this part of the parade, the major of the parade, Major Scott Clark of the Grenadier Guards, who I inadvertently put in the parade of the Queen's inspection. He's second in command. And behind him, the first guard, 1st Battalion Coldstream, reach the first corner. You watch the way that they'll turn, the left flank marking time waiting for the others to catch them up, and then on an order, resuming the slow march, in their case, up the south side of horse guards. see the spectators sitting down every time the colour passes them or the Queen passes them, they get to their feet to acknowledge the colour or Her Majesty and then sit down when she goes past. And so this is the front of the parade now, coming up the south side of Horse Guards. You see a checking order being given by an NCO in the centre there. trees on the right is the garden of number 10 Downing Street and the Prime Minister and her guests are sitting watching this parade there. In the background, the mountain bands of the House of Cadbury who have their chance later on in the parade to march past the Queen. on the left-hand side of the guard there, being moved now to the front position, the foremost position, because as they approach Her Majesty, with their own regimental slow march from Figaro being played, they salute the Queen, and the colour is lowered as they go past.
stands on the dais for this march past. The officers with their swords salute to their right. changes to Figaro as the colour is trooped past Her Majesty and will be dipped. And she acknowledges it as it goes past. You can clearly see now the garter star and the crown and all the battle honours on this crimson colour and the gold crown at the top of the ash staff. So the 1st Battalion Coldstream have passed the Queen and now with a change of music for them to Scipio, their slow march, the Grenadiers form number three and number four guard, the 2nd Battalion Grenadiers come to the centre carriageway. So the Grenadiers march past to be followed by the Irish Guards and the music will change to let Erin remember. moment a last change of music, this time the garb of Old Gaul for the march past of the number seven and eight guards found by 2nd Battalion Scots Guards. up the rear of the parade, the adjutant of the parade, Captain Jonathan Bourne May of the Coldstream, whose grandfather commanded the escort on this very parade back in 1922, mounted on inquest.
now Colonel Armitstead, the field officer commanding the parade, turns Launceston round, salutes the Queen as the slow march comes to an end. And in a moment, as he backs his horse away, there'll be a change of step and the whole procedure will be repeated again, this time in quick time. to the side of the parade ground, past the mass bands, where he halts as the guard, still at the slow march now, pass round the west side, past St James's Park, and coming towards the guard's memorial once more, still at the slow march. And in a moment, the field officer in brigade waiting will give the order to break into quick time. Quick time begins with National Emblem. Field officer Colonel Armitstead at the very right hand side of the screen there, with behind him Major Scott Clark. The 1st Battalion Code Stream once again, this time at the quick march now. Approach the dance. They come again to the mark time, ready to march past in quick time. And once again, each regiment, each battalion will have its own music played. Milanolo, for instance, for the Coldstream. And the change of music will signify that they're about to start their march past. The horse is behaving quite well, considering it's a very hot day out here on horse guards with a sun beaming down on this 
grey sandy gravel which gives back the heat. So here we go with the cold stream. This time the colour isn't dipped as it passes the Queen, it's let fly, as they say, and carried at the rear of the escort, not at the front. In a moment, a change to the British Grenadiers for the Grenadiers to march past. St. Patrick's Day for the Irish Guards. Scots Guards approach. Instead, salutes the Queen and reigns Launceston backwards. It's a very fine bay charger. The Queen sits down again, and that stage of trooping the colour, the march past by the foot guards, is over. And what we see next is the whole parade finding its way back to its place and the mass bands who've been in the center of the parade ground clearing the way for the stage that follows which is the march past or the rank past it as it's called of the sovereign's escort of the household cavalry So cavalry are on the left there, just in front of the Guards Memorial by St. James's Park. Their horses have been standing quietly, their bands haven't been playing, the bands have always been the bands of the foot guards in the center of the parade ground here. But in a moment, the Sovereign's Escort and the Household Cavalry start on the final big stage of this parade, which in many people's minds I think is the most dashing of all as they rank past first at the walk and then at the trot. But that was a very smart turnout by the foot guys this morning. They've had two big rehearsals like this for this and many, many hours of rehearsing 
in their own barracks and parade grounds, every little detail worked out and timed. They now conform and left form back into the positions they were, and then the music, when they're in place, will cut out. The pipes play Queen Elizabeth as the mass bands march off. The pipes of the Scots and the Irish Guards on the flank of the mass bands. The Irish Guards there in their saffron kilts and green. And the Scots Guards in tongue. And so the drum horses of the massed mountain bands, the Sovereign's Escort, come onto the parade ground. Their turn has come, and a very splendid sight they make as they turn here. And they will play for the rank past of the Household Cavalry, and then themselves, finally, rank past the Queen. two drum horses, Belisarius and Caractacus. Sovereign standard of the household cavalry is now brought onto the parade ground, bearing the royal coat of arms and the cipher E2R, the battle honours of the regiment. And it's flown from a pike topped with a golden crown and a lion. And the spectators once again get to their feet to honour the standard as it's carried past them. Just like the foot guards, they start their parade here at the walk, the equivalent of the slow march for the foot guards, and then at the trot. Led by two divisions of the lifeguards and two divisions of the blues and royals in the rear.
clock on horse guards you may have heard striking midday as this rank past of the household cavalry begins so they've been on parade now for a full hour and once again as they reach the center carriageway and pass the queen the standard always go with the standard. One for the protection of the standard and one for sound signals from the standard. the slow march of the Blues and Royals as they approach, recognizable by the red plumes and the blue uniforms under these gold cuirasses. with those silver axes, the farriers, who used to have the bloody but important job of dispatching wounded horses in warfare and cutting off their hooves to show that they'd been killed and that a replacement could now be sought. They don't, of course, use them for that now, but traditionally still ride behind the mounted household cavalry, the farriers, from both blues and royals and lifeguards. So their slow march is over and they come down the other side of the parade ground. And when they reach the bottom, they receive the order to trot, which you will hear given not by word of mouth, but by the trumpeter who sounds the trot. breaks into the keel road as 
the Sovereign's escort ranks past at the trot. And this time they too don't lower their standard but keep it flying. Finally, the mounted band of the Household Cavalry under the command of Major McCall of the Life Guards marches past the Queen, the kettle drummers crossing their sticks as they pass. The mounted band has now passed Her Majesty and is on its way behind numbers eight and seven guard. And when it reaches there, the field officer will give the order guards royal salute, present arms, the color will be lowered, and the national anthem will be played. The birthday parade ending as it began here on horse guards with a royal salute to the queen. The parade now starts one by one, step by step, to leave the parade ground. First go the mounted band in all their splendor and the sovereign's escort. The foot guards, however, have to stand firm until they're given permission by the queen to leave the parade ground. And she then leads them back down the Mount Buckingham Palace where there's another 
march past. The eight guards now have to reform themselves, ready for this march down the Mall, into divisions and into three ranks. The royal colonels who've been watching this parade mounted beside the Queen, Prince of Wales, Prince Philip, and the Duke of Kent. Duke of Edinburgh on the right there, and Prince Charles on the left of your picture on the Duke of Edinburgh's right. And in the meantime, the Queen Mother has already left Horse Guards and begun her journey back down the Mall with the Princess of Wales and the two princes and the logistics are that she has to get clear of this exit which is just reaching the approach road of horse guards before the procession comes out the two royal princes giving waves and there's the mounted band there waiting to follow her down the mall Mounted escort, one of the troopers of the Blues and Royals playing up a bit, turns into the approach road now that they know that the Queen Mother's procession is safely on its way back to Buckingham Palace for the celebratory lunch that follows this procession. And crossing the parade ground, the only figure moving on it now, the field officer in brigade waiting, Lieutenant Colonel Armstead, who goes to report to the Queen. And the words you may catch are, Your Majesty's guards are ready to march off, ma'am. So with permission given by the Queen for the parade to march off, it's not been known for her to say you must do it all again, but it has been known on rehearsals for the commanding officer to say, I want you to do it all again because it didn't work properly. But this was a very impressive, uh, not a military man sufficient to say it was impeccable, but a very impressive performance this morning. The Queen's carriage will be brought in a moment to the dais for her to get back into that, and then she leads the procession off. 
key figure in this whole parade, Garrison Sergeant Major Mason, six foot six tall, and he is checking that everything is clear in the Mall. That's not the, that is in a way the least of the things he does because during the whole rehearsal for trooping, it's he, along with the commanding officer, who briefs the other officers and the troops about what's gone wrong and what's gone right. He was out early this morning checking all the markers with his stick that he holds under his left shoulder there. And so the phaeton is driven back to the dais for the Queen. take up guard at Buckingham Palace. Most of them will return to their regimental barracks. The senior drum major giving the signal as the mass band pauses and they wait while the Queen drives up behind them as I said, will lead the way back down the mountain. And as she goes off, a round of applause for all those people who've taken part in this celebration this morning. isn't yet over for these men because they march off horse guards and down the mall but when they get to the bottom of the mall there'll be a further march past of everybody who's taken part in the parade all the bands and the foot guards and the mounted guards and the king's troop of the royal horse artillery who fired that 41 gun salute to the queen at the beginning of the parade the queen has another dais built outside buckingham palace and she'll be standing there as they go past once more So as the mass bands wheel out around the approach road and down the Mall, leading the Queen back to Buckingham Palace, this ceremony of trooping the colour. 
first mentioned as a way of celebrating the sovereign's birthday in the middle of the 18th century is over for another year. Her Majesty's Phaeton comes out and will turn the royal colonels behind her and a cheer from the crowd. And what more colourful, what more exciting way could be found of saying happy birthday. standards who've been standing there for two hours in the hot sun get a round of applause from the spectators as they march off the parade. And this is really all the king's horses and all the king's men. It's the splendid sight of the mass bands coming down, the queen with her family, the officers who are the royal colonels around her queen drawn by the two Windsor Greys, and then all those foot guards who took part in the parade following her down towards Buckingham Palace. and the other members of the royal family already on the balcony as the Queen arrives at the gates of Buckingham Palace. Not to go through them, as you might expect, under the archway, but to stop and dismount and go back onto that small desk there to take the final salute of this whole parade. When the whole parade, including the King's troop of the Royal Horse Artillery, who were giving the 41-gun salute, will go past the Queen once more before the parade finally is dismissed. troop, six gun detachments on parade, 75 horses, 57 officers and men in full dress, a very splendid sight with their gun carriages and the swords of the salute. Queen Mother talking to Prince Michael of Kent as the royal family watches the Queen standing alone on the dais below. of Wales, Prince Harry down beside him. There are the children of Prince and Princess Michael of Kent, Duke and Duchess of Gloucester's children on the right. The Duchess of Gloucester and her son, the Earl of Ulster. Now the mounted band of the Household Cavalry ranks past Her Majesty for the last time. And finally Colonel Armistead comes out the very last moment of this parade. The parade is now formally dismissed.
And now the crowds who've been waiting round here and at the very top of the mall gradually, like the tide, come down towards Buckingham Palace with the police just holding them back in the front. They've come down to see the royal family come back onto this balcony for the fly past by the royal air force. The Queen, the Queen Mother, the Duke of Edinburgh. Waiting for the fly pass down the mall. It comes straight at them towards Buckingham Palace and passes over their heads. The Duchess of York there, we've just seen behind the Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke of York on the far right talking to his father. And the Queen, I think, having looked to see if the planes are in sight. Prince William seems to think he's seen them. I'm certain Prince Harry has. And here they come, the Nimrod, TriStar transport aircraft first, the Nimrod behind, and then the Red Arrows. That's a sight that certainly pleased them all on the balcony as the smoke from them as they disappear over Buckingham Palace and on south and the last wave to the crowd at the end of this ceremony of trooping the colour and what more lively and colourful way can you think of of saying quite simply happy birthday.